You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Who are you going to call? So when you want to call, you dial that number. Call! It's the Jeep Talk Show Call-In Show with Tammy and Tony. They're going to be talking Jeeps with you. There's no show without you, so call in now. Just make the call. Good call! That's one call now. Thanks for joining us, folks. This is episode 19 of the Jeep Talk Call-In Show. This is where you get a chance to call in live and talk directly to Tony and myself. So please don't be shy. Call in. Each week we have a different question about your Jeep or Jeep life in general. And we want you to call in and share your Jeep experiences with us. Call in now. You'll hear the show on your phone. And when it's your turn, you'll know. Just dial 302-202-1110 and enter in the code 219-835. I agree, there, Tony. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> All right, guys, it's uh, almost Christmas time, as you probably saw by our little uh, uh, Christmas promo. We want to wish everybody a a very merry Christmas, and and what else, Tammy? Happy Hanukkah. Do you say it that way? I thought there was a SK in there. <laughs> Hanukkah. Oh, I just say Hanukkah. Hanukkah. <laughs> no one's ever corrected me. Oh well, you should know better. That's going to happen here. Uh, early and often, as Josh would say, yeah. Uh, which I believe Josh is with us tonight. You didn't, uh, you didn't so. read the little thing about Josh may stick his head in from time to time. This is one of those times where he's. Oh, I know he, it's he's not in there. Stuck his chat in there from time to time, which he's with us tonight. I guess he got off early. That's good. Uh, or maybe he uh, had a, a good drive home. It was a punishment last week for that. Uh, what was it? Four oh hour, my goodness! Four hour, five hour trek home. Whenever they got one point seven inches of snow and everything was shut down. <laughs> well, you heard what happened here. Saturday. I don't think people so. Were, people were stuck in, in on the interstate for eight to nine hours because of a tanker trailer explosion. Oh, my goodness. Uh, because you, of the ice. And you have an alibi? Yes. Okay. I okay. was sleeping. <laughs> was there any witnesses? Yeah. <laughs> Just the guy hanging outside your uh, your bedroom window. Yeah, really. The stalker. <laughs> well, Tammy, what are we going to talk about tonight? Well, last week. We were going to talk about manual versus automatic automatic. And since we didn't get a chance to do that, I thought we would continue on with that. And I thought it should be, do you prefer manual versus automatic just in your daily driver or manual versus automatic when you're off road? So folks call in and share your thoughts on the pluses and negatives of each, and you can call in at 302-202-1110, and then you punch in 219-835, stay on the line, and Tony and I will um, see that you're holding, and we'll ask you to join us. And we do have, uh, we've got actually three callers waiting. Oh, my goodness. And uh, like, shut up, Tammy. We're, we're going to take the first one first, which is a new caller. Hey, caller, thanks for giving us a call. What's your name, and uh, what color is your Jeep? So my name is Jason, and my Jeep is black. <laughs> Yay! I do wish for a different color. Oh, you do? It wasn't. It wasn't my first choice. Oh. <laughs> Tammy's well, I, Tammy's I, down and dejected now. <laughs> so I bought the car this April, and it's a 2005 uh, LJ. Oh, nice! I love it. But I know you guys have talked about how hard it is to find those LJs. Yes. So I was a little limited when I found the one. It happens to be an automatic, and that's what I wanted for a a Jeep. So you didn't consider the standard at all? I, I've i driven standards all my life. I was taught to drive a standard when my dad took me out to the middle of nowhere and said, <laughs> you're driving home. <laughs> that's how oh, it was no. for me. Oh, no, that's like being thrown in the swimming pool learning how yeah. to swim. Yeah, there was a lot of, uh, you know, forward and back motion. Oh, yeah. So, so do you take your Jeep off-roading? So I've had it since April, and I have taken it off-roading three or four times. But I don't, it's it's pretty stock. So the plan is to lift it a little bit and put some bigger tires on it before I do anything serious. So do you prefer the automatic and why? 
I did. I, I have a, a good friend that got me into a uh, Jeep and he has a 2003 Rubicon that is a standard transmission. And uh, he's let me drive it a few times and kind of talking to him and reading different forms. I knew it was something I wanted to wheel with, and uh, I, I ended up going with an automatic. Yeah. I oh. understand when you're a newer um, off-roader, automatically, automatics, um, are a little easier to work with using a manual takes a little bit of finesse. You know, in, in my mind, uh, a Jeep should be a standard. You know, that was me before I actually owned a Jeep. Right. And, and that's actually one of the things I asked whenever I was getting my 1998, 1998 uh, Jeep Cherokee was, this is really nice, but do you have it a standard? And they told me, well, they'd have to special order it from the factory. Mm-hmm. Now the TJ I was looking at was a standard. And then years later, as I've learned about off-roading, I, I understand that if you're going to go rock crawling, all the rock crawlers really do uh, automatics because they don't want to have to be messing with you know the, the line they're taking or paying attention right. to the to the uh, the spotter and having to you know uh, finesse the 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 two foot on the three pedals, right? <laughs> the two yeah. feet on the three pedals. So uh, uh, and really, mine was for gas mileage and also too. I can usually figure out how a, uh, a standard transmission works. So if it breaks, I can fix it. Automatic transmission, not so much. Yeah, everything that I read when I did research, it was pretty split between die hard has to be a standard or people preferring the automatic. Right. I uh, I test drove a newer a JK with my with my wife a JKU, and the it really drives like a truck because it is a truck Jeep, and. She drives a standard as well, but she did not prefer the truck feel of the Jeep uh, with the standard. So I went with the not automatic, also because she wasn't really on board with me getting the Jeep in the first place. Oh, right. no. How can, you, how can you be with a now, non-Jeep person? What's wrong person? with her? Well, Jason, we're going to wish well, you a very... Yes. I'm sorry. We're going to wish you a very Merry sure. Christmas. We have a couple more callers that are waiting. So thank you very much for calling in. We... We want you to call in uh, yeah. again in the future. Thank Please you again. Please do. Tell us more about your Jeep. We want to hear more yeah. about your Jeep. Oh, and uh, you can go over to jeeptalkforum.com and post up there and post pictures for us and everybody else to look at. Hey, yeah. Goose, how's it going? Thanks for calling in tonight. Uh, sorry you had to wait there. It's kind of unusual. We've got uh, several callers. Yoo-hoo, Goose. <laughs> uh, Goose. Hey. Goose ran hey. to the bathroom real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, man, how's it going? Oh, sorry, I didn't uh, catch up. So, Goose, do you prefer uh, automatic or manual? Uh, definitely automatic whenever I'm wheeling and rock rolling. A daily driver and for a towing rig, I definitely want manual. And audio, why is that? Your audio is coming and going, Goose. I don't know if you're talking loud into the, the, the oh. microphone or not. I'm um, I'm sorry, I'm I'm in my car driving right now, and I got you on Bluetooth. Is that a little bit better? It's a lot yep. better. Yep. Okay, so uh, for off-roading and wheeling, I would definitely want an automatic. But for like a towing rig or a daily driver, if you're not daily driving in like a congested city, I want a manual. Yeah, that's my feelings too. Yeah, it's kind of rough in stop-and-go traffic. Um, oh, yeah. The standard is. Oh, you- it's terrible. You know, you can get used to it, but um, it, it it does get rough. I always felt yeah, like I when that. I was driving the manual, like I was a race car driver. It is fun. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, my daily driver is a 96 two-door Saturn, and it's a little bitty thing. I know y'all are, I'm sure y'all know that General Motors made these things out of plastic. The only metal yeah. on this car is the roof, the engine compartment hood, and the trunk hood. Doors are plastic, my fenders are all plastic, and it feels like a little go-kart. I put it, you know, throw it down a couple of years and let it high rev and spin around the corner. It's pretty hilarious and it's really fun. <laughs> so, Goose, why manual when you're off-roading? Well, I think or, you said I mean, for towing. Automatic. Uh, automatic. Automatic, uh, I don't know if I told you or not, but I used to have a dark blue 07 JK, and it was a manual. And it was it was really tough doing the trails that I'm doing now. 
and telling you guys about, it was really tough uh, wheeling that thing. And I, I got pretty good at actually, I, 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 my feet, you know, this might be a jab in myself, but my feet are really small. So <laughs> for, <laughs> it, it's really hard to work the clutch, work the brake pedal, and work the gas at the same time. So I got pretty good at going over obstacles. And instead of using the brake pedal, I kept one on the clutch, one on the fuel, or one on the gas pedal, and I used the emergency brake as a braking deal. Yeah, I can see that. And I kept and I kept that as my control. Because I didn't change gears whenever I was traversing an obstacle. I just put it in a real low gear and I eased out of the clutch and eased onto the gas. And if I needed to do a sudden stop, I always kept the the the, the, the button depressed and I would just pull it and adjust it as I needed it. And it, it did fairly well for me, but it is so much nicer in my XJ having the brake and not having to deal with the clutch. And also, that's a good way to burn up a clutch. You know, kind of riding it that bad, you're really going to end up throwing out throw-out bearings really quick. Yeah, it really heats everything up. You know, I was thinking about with uh, with Jason, our last caller, when he said that his dad took him out to the woods and uh, said, uh, you got to figure it out how to, how to get home. I figured, I thought uh, he's going to be changing out a clutch for sure. Because uh, that, that's a lot of yeah, what you that, do is burn the clutch when you're learning. That 07 JK um, is how I actually learned to drive standard, and now I'm a commercial. You know, now I have a commercial license, and that was kind of a good intro into it, and it's actually really helped me out. My job is, you know, a lot of construction sites with the snow melting, everything's really muddy, and they're, you know, I'm switching between ice, I'm going to mud, then I find dry rock, and it doing the off roading actually helped me be, be better at my job as well. Oh, I bet. Because, you know, now I don't have five gears. Now I have 18. And, mm. <laughs> and I, I'm 26,000 pounds. You know, it's really important to be able to maintain momentum and also know when to, you know, use your clutch and everything. And it, I don't know. I just, but, yeah, automatic off-road, manual, on the long haul, and for towing, especially towing. Well, Goose, let me ask you a quick question. It's not uh, Jeep related. It's uh, eighteen wheeler related. Why is it that when I get behind an eighteen wheeler at a red light, it takes you guys so long to take off from a dead stop? I mean, can't you just give it a little gas and move a lot faster? I mean, with those eighteen gears, I would think you'd be able to get get the hell out of the way. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, uh, <laughs> you know what? It would be easier to show you and to tell you, but I'm going to do my best to tell you in a nutshell. <laughs> How fast do you think you could shift 18 times? <laughs> uh, if I was on uh, you know, Fast and Furious, was, about two and a half seconds. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the other thing is, though, is um, sure, I could take off fast. I really could. But, you know, most vehicles for companies, they don't, they don't they're not like the semi-drag races that you see where those guys <laughs> dump the clutch and they got the frame and the truck front end lifting up and twisting. Yeah. My truck won't do that. It'll break something. So if I if I take a, you know if I take one of those come the straight six Cummins that are commercial size and I'm pushing you know I'm pushing twelve hundred fifteen hundred foot pounds of torque and I'm just dumping the clutch I'm gonna start snapping drive shafts I'm gonna start snapping U joints and um, and you know what the best thing for is they are big tough trucks they really are. They're very well built. They're really strong. But you need to baby them. You really do. It is a finesse thing. I actually don't use my clutch whenever I shift because I don't want my boss coming after me for running a throwout bearing for double clutching. I, I float my gears, and I don't even grind them. I yeah. float the gears all the way through and all the way down. You probably know. That. I don't I don't want to be responsible for that. You probably know <laughs> what speed you need to be going for the gears to, to sync up and just be able to shift between the two. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot yeah, of fun. You know how, little yeah. little subtleties, RPM subtleties you can do with the manual gear. It. I'm sorry. Uh, RPM matching is basically what they call it. Gotcha. Well, Goose, uh, thank you a lot for yeah, for giving us a call tonight, and uh, wish you a very merry Christmas. And of course, I was just giving you a hard time about uh, moving out of the way. Uh, you know, anytime somebody's pulling what uh, eighty thousand pounds, seventy thousand pounds, it's going to be hard to to get out of the way. And I and I will say this: when they don't have the trailer behind them, they do move a little faster. Yeah. So, <laughs> gotta respect those big wheelers out there on the road. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get over to Josh. 
Uh, you know, well, this has to be the Josh we know. So, Josh, thanks for calling in. And how was your commute home today? Or are, are you home for the holidays? No, I'm not home for the holidays. I, that would be really nice. But no, that's not happening. Uh, no, it, uh, <laughs> it, it was one fifth of what it was the other night. Uh, de- oh, I've depressed. How horrible. It. Well, that's great news. I mean, is it still uh, still snowy and icy up there or has it changed? No, it war- it warmed up and rained as it usually does, and so uh, we got we got free and clear of that. There's still some stuff on the side of the roads and in a couple of the yards here and there, but uh, but that's about it. Now, Josh, I know you have an opinion about automatic or standard. Is there is there any good reason sure, for a standard in a Jeep? Well, I've got an opinion about everything, as you well know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's good that you do. Uh, but I, I, no, I, I, there's a place for both. Honestly, um, there, there's there's a time where uh, a stick would definitely come in handy. Um, and if you're just getting into wheeling, you know, it might not be a bad idea to to familiarize yourself with with a stick. And, and honestly, once you get into a built rig, a stick would be nice to have. And and the one thing that I've learned that can that can really make wheeling a whole lot easier if you own a stick is a hand throttle. We're talking a $7 mm. part from your local, you know, bike supply store, one of those little bike shifter cables, super easy mod. You hook it up to your stick shift, run a cable through the firewall, and now you have something that you can literally adjust to the 100 RPM level, you know, where you want your RPMs to sit. And then you can just take your foot off the gas and you could double foot it if you really wanted to, but then you only have to, you know, basically run a clutch and a brake at that point. So that would be illegal on the road, is that correct? I would believe uh, that might not pass some state inspections. That's something that we don't have to worry about here in Oregon. So um, I'm not sure how that would work in, in a state where you have to have the vehicle inspected in order mm-hmm. for it to be on the road legally. So, but, but certainly uh, off- Definitely great uh, mod for trail vehicles yeah. or in states that don't have inspections. Yeah, certainly off-road. I, I know that uh, years ago, um, and this is like I think back in the 50s, they would put a little knob on the steering wheel that would spin and when you were turning the steering wheel and i think this was probably pre uh power steering when you return turn the steering wheel you could put your hand on that knob and spin the steering wheel around easily Hmm. and uh that was illegal to have on there i I guess because it could catch on your clothes or something uh since it was sticking out from the steering wheel if your forehead bounced off the steering wheel and were to happen to come come in contact with that knob (laughs) it would be a very no good bad day yeah but 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 there are some great there are you know um advantages and disadvantages to automatics and sticks i mean you know with a with a stick if you're an inexperienced wheeler and you're not really super familiar with your vehicle you may not understand that in four low you can just put it in first and just let it crawl and almost at idle it will pretty much go over just about anything obviously traction devices are going to help you here but you know if you start working that clutch a lot it's going to get hot it's going to wear out real fast you're going to smell it and you know you're going to end up with a burnout clutch before the end of the day or at the very least a very sore you know leg trying to keep yourself from stalling or keep yourself from rolling backwards etc etc yeah well i know when i go um to roche creek sometimes i'm with wheelers who have manuals and I always hear them restarting their engine. Yeah. They're like restarting their engine yeah, a lot. It'll happen. Yeah. It's, it'll happen. But you know, th- there's a, a, a debate that we kind of had a while back on, I might've covered both shows, but the, uh, uh, one of the disadvantages of having a stick out on the trail is mud and getting up into the bell housing and, and, yep. and whatnot and muddy water and, you know, shifting gears and moving that clutch in deep water can definitely ruin your day. So, you know, that's one more disadvantage of, of having a, a stick on, on the trail. But um, I found one advantage to having an automatic on the trail is the ability to preload the transmission up a little bit. Uh, having, you know, kind of standing on the brake, loading up the RPMs a little bit, you kind of get some preload into the tires. If you're kind of on an obstacle a little bit, it might help you bump yourself over if you, uh, you know, are in a precarious position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. And you can't do that in a stick very easily. That's a that's a great idea about the uh the hand uh the the hand throttle. I never even thought about that. That would be a wonderful way to not have to work three pedals. Now did we talk about that you before on one of the other shows? For some reason that rings a bell. Not to me. That's that's br- that uh, sounds maybe brand not new. The hand throttle specifically. Hmm. Well I've someone's mentioned that to me before. So it's Josh, a very uh, common mod. I mean, that's that's been around for a very long time. So Josh, uh, we're uh, past our fifteen minutes. Is there anything else that you would like to talk about? We, uh, you know, we do the, the 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 question of the day 
during the first 15 minutes Tony, and then the lighter 15 me. minutes. And I've always got <laughs> oh, something geez. to say. Uh, I am not going to leave you guys with something uh, like a, a happy holidays. I'm going to say Merry Christmas, damn it. And uh, to all those Jeepers out there, you hope you guys have a happy new year. Yeah, And, and we, Josh, we'll see you Thursday night. Right. And we're going to have a little bit of a Christmas theme with our Thursday night show. Uh, because you know Christmas is this weekend. If uh, if you are shocked to hear this, you have fewer shopping days left than what you thought. <laughs> Better hurry up and get out there. That that goes for me doubly. I gotta go. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye. Good night, Josh. <laughs> He's gotta go. He's Josh, gotta do some um, shopping. I like anything purple. <laughs> I would like. Hmm, what else should I have Josh get me for Christmas? Somebody's going shopping. A hey, winning team? Yeah. Oh, please. We do not talk about football anymore. Football season See? is over. See, this is this is why I tell you tell you folks that, you know if you want to if you want to follow the sports teams, the professional sports team, that's fine. But you're always going dis- to be disappointed with them. Uh, it's very oh, yeah. it's very rare that you won't be disappointed. So Unless you're paid. A Patriots fan. Speaking of disappointment, Tammy and I are going to be disappointed if you don't give us a call uh, right now at uh, 302-202-1110 and then punch in your six-digit code to actually get to us, 219-835-302-202-1110, 219-835. So, Tammy, did you ever give any kind of uh, uh, any uh, thought to getting a standard transmission or was it always automatic for you? Well, when I traded the Saharan for the Rubicon and I was test driving some Rubicons, um, I test drove a Hydro Blue um, manual. And actually, um, we took it out on a little bit of some rocks and a ditch. And um, I got the feel of how it just kind of crawls itself over. Mm -hmm. But I was just worried of like what they talked about earlier is wearing the clutch down because I just wasn't. I know how to drive manual just out on the trails. I was just a little nervous. So yeah. Plus it was hydro blue. <laughs> Doesn't go well with purple. You're okay with blue. Aren't you, Steve? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> the only true color. <laughs> oh, there <Yes>. you go. <laughs> it's the, it's, it's the beauty of the atmosphere. I in a little bit here about this uh, standard automatic thing. Cause oh, I probably have do. some different opinions than, than most folks, but oh, good. I think they're valid. Um, I wheeled nothing but standard transmissions for a long time. And in fact, uh, my first automatic that I had in a wheeler was in the Jeep I have now. Um, but I did different kinds of wheeling, and wheeling has kind of changed a little bit over the years and so forth. But uh, the, the thing that I prefer in mud uh, that was always my favorite was, was a uh, three, three speed on the floor. Uh, and the reason for that is is, is twofold. One is that I could uh, uh, grab reverse real fast if I quit moving forward, and I could rock the Jeep pretty well. And I can't do that with an automatic. There's always such a lag between first and reverse. That's true. And the other is that uh, that you know over time I got to where I had a really good feel for what the Jeep was doing, you know, through the butt dyno. Uh, and I, I really don't have that good a feel anymore with the automatic. So, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of pluses there. But in the rocks and stuff like that where I wheel now, uh, automatic is the way to go. A lot less work and makes, it, makes your rig more capable. Yeah, that's what I keep hearing. Yeah, it's kind of luck. I guess I lucked out by uh, getting the the Cherokee uh, over the TJ because I would have gotten the standard uh, transmission, and uh, it would have been rough uh, driving to Houston and the, the stop and go traffic every day. I would have done it though. I mean, uh, I I drove my first vehicle was a standard, and uh, drove it for several years uh, before I totaled it. <laughs> well, and I would agree with Steve on the the rocking back and forth because I remember yeah. up in North Dakota with my manual in the snow. Um, being able to do that rock back, rocking back and forth helped you get out of a lot of snowy, stuck situations. It's it's been many years since I did that, and uh, that first vehicle that I had exactly right. But it's so easy to get back, go back and forth between the the first and the uh, reverse gear. So uh, I kind of miss it. Brought back uh, some long term memories there, Steve. Yes. Thanks for calling in. Well, and it looks like we have one more caller. Hang on a second. 
I'm sorry, uh, you, you guys were doubling. What'd you say, oh. Steve? I said it's it's getting hard to find a three speed anymore where you can do that easily. Uh, now it's five speeds, six speeds. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the transmissions keep getting bigger and longer. So it's getting harder to do that, really. Yeah. Well, Steve, thanks a lot for calling. A very Merry Christmas to you. We do have another caller we're going to get over to real quick. And uh, and great, interesting information that we're getting here tonight. Uh, I really appreciate that. So this is a brand new caller. Hey, caller, uh, what's your name and what color is your Jeep? Hey, guys, it's uh, Dave from Oregon, and I have a brand new black uh, Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> did, so, did you get this by choice? The, I mean, or is that what they they gave it to you for a great deal or something? Um, yeah, you know, I didn't get a great deal on it. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not against black. Like my first choice was white, but then my wife pointed out she was a white uh, Grand Cherokee, and it would look kind of funny in the driveway if we had two white Jeep. Oh so yeah, it was almost too 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 cutesy. My wife and I both have the same color red Jeeps. I mean the exact same oh, PR boy. code. Hers uh-huh. is a hers is a TJ, mine's an XJ. It was totally uh just by a happenstance because it was just what was available on Craigslist for the right price. Yep. Well, I don't know if you guys remember, but I called in left a voicemail a couple of weeks ago, maybe maybe even last week on the talk show about uh I had a Toyota Tacoma pickup that I bought and uh and I didn't, I didn't like it, so you suggested that I buy a Jeep. I talked to you earlier in the year, and you gave me suggestions to buy a Jeep, and I went against your suggestions, and I Uh-oh. ended up paying for it with an uncomfortable ride. Well, but it, I mean, it's, I haven't been in a Toyota in a number of years, but they, they, the back whenever I was had um, ridden in one, uh, it was a, a very well put together vehicle. It was very small, but it was very uh, solid and dependable. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's very low to the ground, that would be kind of, uh, uh that, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. It was, yeah, it was a weird, it was probably one of the weirdest seating positions I've, I've ever sat in. My, my feet were almost kind of straight out in front of me. And if I sat up straight, I was kind of like looking through the front edge of the roof almost. Yeah. So I was uh. driving around kind of hunched over all the time. It's kind of like the uh, oh. the dad from The Incredibles were driving that little car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of funny because I ended up buying a two door Wrangler, um, and I, I I think those seats are a hundred percent more com- com- comfortable than the than the truck. And I got lots of headroom, and I'm not looking through the you know I can actually look through the windshield and see the, see the stoplights and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So I'm I am much happier now. I had a J years ago and uh that that was good but it was the i think the jk for me is a little bit wider and a little bit longer and so it seems to handle the road stuff a little bit better and you know using as a daily driver i kind of appreciate that Mm -hmm. so yeah i do remember your your voicemail and you were talking about the tacoma i thought you still had that did you just get this uh this jk i mean between last week and this week oh my goodness oh wow it's funny. Well, you know what? I was sitting there and I said, "Ah, screw it. I I'm not happy with this thing." I went to the dealership and I looked at a bunch of different different Wranglers and I went back and forth of whether I want a two door or a four door. And um, nothing against the four doors, but to me the two door looks better. I like the look of it better. Mm-hmm. And I don't need a, a bigger SUV because we have the Grand Cherokee for for that do, 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 duty. So now I have this little Jeep and. It's you know, I could buzz around on it, and it's fun. It's easy to turn around and you know maneuver around parking lots or on trails or what whatever. It, you know, to me, it's 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 a it's a fun vehicle to drive, and, and I could take the top off. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the turning radius on my wife's TJ. Uh, the those two doors, the little mm-hmm. bitty things, it's great. I mean, boy, you can yeah, get in and around things quickly. The four doors are really hard, especially on those yeah. tight trails where you do. Really, lots of turns, yeah. trees. So, so this what? Thing is like a go kart. Yeah. So, what model uh, JK did you get? Is it an X? A, a, I don't guess it's a Rubicon because everybody no, always uh, everybody always starts off with I got a Rubicon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, I, I didn't want to spend that much money, mm-hmm. um, and I just 
I don't know why I didn't want them, but I just didn't want to. So, but I did want to get 373s, and I did want to get the limited slip. Um, oh, great! Back lock. So this this one had that. The other thing it had, which which I kind of wanted, was power uh, door locks and win, win, windows, mostly windows, uh, because that crank for the man, man, manual windows just hits me in the knee. Yeah. Um, and I know you can move it and that kind of stuff, but you know, I figured this one had it, and so that was kind of a plus uh, as well. So I got, you know, what I wanted on it and I got a good price on it. And, uh, you know, I got to start figuring out what kind of mods I'm going to end up. What's doing next? Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's the fun thing. Yeah. I like How exciting. I like that uh, too, because when you get a Rubicon, it's kind of all put together for you. But when you get something that yeah. is, you know, doesn't have all that Thank stuff, her. you get to, you get to go the experience of, of putting it together. And I'm really not t- giving you a hard time, Tammy. It's, oh, I know. I think Rubicons are, are fine. I mean, I wouldn't mind having one, but it, there is a, a sense of adventure. And and it's fun shopping and figuring out and talking to people and figuring out what you're going to do. And you make it a little, it's the same thing you're doing with your accents and the bumpers and things. It's making it yours. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, but I think if I had a little bit <laughs> more mechanical experience. That's how you get it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not on a brand new... So, so we're running a little a little long here, Dave. But uh, let me ask you: What do you think your yeah. first mod is going to be? <laughs> a very, very boring, probably floor mat is the first floor mod, mass. and then maybe the second one will be more aggressive uh, off road uh, t- t- tires for it. Mm-hmm. It yeah. has the floor mats was my S- first SAs. I think they're really nice. You know, uh, I don't know what they're not really an all terrain tire, but they're whatever the thirty two inch tire that comes on it. But if I'm going to go off road and that's I, and I and I plan to, I think I need something a little bit more aggressive, maybe an all terrain yeah. type tire. Well, that's Tammy, that Tammy was driving hers uh, up there at Ross Creek, uh, this bone stock at minus the, uh, the the purple accents. Uh, right. For well, how many the, how many times? The, a lot. Yeah. At least ten. Well, I will say the um, the Rubicon stock tires um, were a lot better than the stock. Oh, Sahara yeah, and I can see that. Those are those are good, rich uh, BFGs, aren't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, yep, they're like a real aggressive, nice, nice looking tread on it. Right. Looks like it'd be really do really well in the dirt. Yeah, I know a lot of people who get the Sport and the Sahara um, get the Rubicon stock tires. Mm-hmm. Yep, I get my eyes peeled on Craigslist for a set. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was just suggesting. Yeah. That's exactly I what I was going to suggest. Some. <laughs> I could have saved. Yeah, him. yeah, but he's in Oregon. That'd be a hell of yeah. a shipping oh, plan. Can you imagine the shipping? <laughs> it would be a lot of that'd be shipping. Yeah. expensive shipping. Well, Dave, we're going to let you run. Thank you very much thank for, calling for calling in, and also too, thank you for the uh, the uh, voicemail last week. And it was great hearing an update. Wow, I'm glad that you you kind of listened to what I suggested because I suggested getting a TJ. <laughs> but that's fine. You can get what you want. He wanted to be in the cool black Jeep Wrangler <laughs> well, Club. Well, they make black TJs, I think. Yeah, I probably do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we heard from an LJ, uh, a brand new JK, and, uh, of course, uh, the the Cherokees from uh, Josh and Steve tonight. And, uh, wow, that's uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of calls. We really appreciate yeah, it. And, thank you uh, so much, everyone. It was a, a great Christmas gift, not only for Tammy and I, but for all the listeners to get to hear all the, the different things that are going out there, on out there in the Jeep world. And don't forget to join us Thursday night, this Thursday, same place, um, a little different time. We're going to be on at 10 o'clock Central. And my Wrangler talk, I'm going to share with you how I was a big, fat, scaredy cat last Thursday and how that's going to fall straight into trail etiquette. Um, so many folks, join us Thursday night for the Jeep Talk call Show, and we'll be here again Tuesday night for the Jeep Talk call Show, and we'll be talking about off-road trail etiquette. Yep, and you guys have a great uh, um, Christmas. I mean, I know you guys are going to be with us Thursday, so you'll be hearing this again. But uh, we'd want to thank you very much for joining us tonight, and uh, hope you guys are safe. See you Thursday, 10 p.m. Central Time.